Welcome to OSBT Standard Procedure 311, Personal Protective Equipment Program, Employee Education. Basis for this course, our PPE program comprises of the following elements. Assignment of responsibilities, discuss personal protective equipment, employee safety training on how to use and maintain PPE, program review and evaluation, and record keeping. Management recognizes that some of our employees are exposed to workplace hazards that can cause injury. The preferred way to avoid injury is through engineering controls or administrative controls, but when those controls are not feasible or do not provide significant enough protection, an alternative or supplementary method of protection to provide the workers with PPE and know how to use the PPE properly. Thus, we have developed a personal protective equipment program. This program addresses appropriate eye, face, head, foot, and hand protection. This program excludes the use of respiratory protection and hearing protection, which are addressed as appropriate in separate programs that color the, cover those exposures. This course will help acquaint you with various types of PPE used in our workplace. Our goal is to avoid injuries. What is personal protective equipment? Personal protective equipment, or PPE, includes a variety of devices and garments to protect our workers from injury. You can find PPE designed to protect your eyes, face, head, ears, feet, hands and arms, and your whole body. PPE equipment includes goggles, face shields, safety glasses, hard hats, safety shoes, gloves, vests, and ear protection. PPE does not consist of colanders and plastic buckets. Head protection, hard hats. We will review the following topics. Head hazards, type of hard hats, use and care, review of hazard assessment. Why head protection is important. A single head injury can handicap an employee life or it can be fatal. Head protection is needed when a person's head is menaced by falling or flying objects or by bumps. Hard hat classes. Class A, general service, mining, building construction, shipbuilding, lumbering, and manufacturing. Impact protection, but limited voltage protection. Class B, electrical work, protection against falling objects and high voltage shocks and burns. Class C, protects the head that may bump against fixed objects, but does not protect against falling objects or electrical shock. Anatomy of a hard hat. A hard hat compromises of a rigid shell that resists and affects blows to the head and a suspension system inside the hat that acts as a shock absorber. Some hard hats can be modified so you can add face shields, goggles, hoods, or hearing protection to them. Liners are also available for cold weather use. Do not remove suspension in order to wear the hat over a parka hoodie. Doing so will completely destroy the protection given by the hat.
Common complaints and the real truth. It's too heavy. Hard hats are only a few ounces heavier than a cloth cap, but the X protection you get is well worth the extra weight. It's too hot. Measurements taken in a hot weather show that the temperatures under the hard hat is often cooler than it is outside. It gives me a headache. A thump on the head is from something falling two floors will give you one that's much worse. However, there's no medical reason why a properly adjusted hard hat should give you a headache. It won't stay on. You're right, it won't in high wind. A chin strap will solve that problem. Otherwise, you'll find that the hard hat will stay on no matter how much stopping or bending you have to do if it's fitted properly. Sometimes we hear the following complaints about hard hats. Quote, are there any real basis for them? Care of hard hats. Clean your hard hat as needed to remove oil, grease, chemicals, and sweat that can collect in and around your hat. You can clean your hat with a mild soap in hot water for 5 to 10 minutes. Rinse the clear water, wipe, and let the air dry. Because prolonged exposure to the sun and heat can damage your hat, store it in a clean, dry, and cool location out of direct sunlight. Hard hat inspection. Inspect headwear before each use for visible signs of dents, cracks, gouges, penetration, chalking, loss of gloss, or any other signs of damage that might reduce the degree of safety originally provided. Replace the hard hat whenever a hairline crack starts to appear. Replace the hat that has been struck by a forcible object even if there's no obvious damage. Under normal use, hard hats will last two to five years. Remove or destroy any hard hat that's protective abilities are in doubt. Hard hat suspension, what's under the shell? Inspect suspension before every use. Look for cracked, torn, or frayed straps. Replace suspension when damage or defects are detected. Suspensions will deteriorate over time, from exposure to sunlight, and chemicals, perspiration, and hair oils. The normal service life of a suspension is about one year of regular use. The suspension may last longer with intermittent use. Perspiration from daily use from hot weather may cause the suspension to deteriorate in less than a year. Replace the suspension whenever it's needed. Do not mix different manufacturer suspension types of hard hats. Replace suspension harness must be from the same manufacturer or for the same model of the same hat. Don't wear a hard hat backwards unless you rotate the suspension. Hard hats have either a six point or a four point system shown in the two photos. Most newer hats have a pivoting system adjustment knob that allows you to swivel the hat shell from front to back and at least the suspension in its most protective configuration. Use of hard hats. Do not use paint, solvents, gasoline, chemicals, or harsh cleaning materials on the shell. Do not transport headwear in the rear windows of vehicles since sunlight with extreme heat will weaken it. Do not put anything in the space between the suspension and the shell. Paints, solvents, chemicals, and harsh cleaning chemicals will weaken the plastic, make it more susceptible to cracks and reduce electrical resistance. Paint will also hide cracks that develop. Since the space between the suspension and the shell acts like a shock absorbent, objects in that space will most likely transfer the force directly to the head. More don'ts of a hard hat. Do not drill holes into the hat to improve ventilation. Do not cut notches on the brim. Do not paint it. Do not expose to extreme heat or prolonged ultraviolet light, such on a vehicle dashboard or rear view window. 
Do not apply metal tape on it. That can conduct electricity. Do not put anything between the suspension and shell. There must be a one-fourth clearance inside the hardware while it's being worn. In case will blow to the head, that space will help absorb a shock. Eye protection. Following topics will be covered. Types of eye protection, use and care of eye protection, and a review of hazard assessments. Eye protection, why it's needed. What can be more precious than your sight? What if you can no longer see this? Types of eye hazards, flying objects, particles and dust, chemicals, harmful light radiation, ultraviolet, infrared, or lasers. The four main types of eye protection. One, spectacle type safety glasses. Safety glasses have lenses that have impact resistant in frames that are far stronger than those of regular eyeglasses. Safety glasses with permanently attached side shields must be worn by those who require protection against flying particles. Safety glasses come in a variety of different lens materials, shades, and tints. Lens materials include polycarbonate, plastic, or glass, which can vary in strength, impact resistance, scratch resistance, and weight. Regular eyeglasses must be not used in place of protective eyewear. Safety goggles must be worn over regular eyeglasses to protect from potential eye hazards. Alternatively, prescription safety glasses may be used but must meet ANSI Z87.1 standards for impact resistance. Safety goggles. Safety goggles offer greater eye protection than safety glasses by providing a secure shield around the entire eye to protect against hazards coming from any direction. Safety goggles are impact resistant and like safety glasses are available in a variety of different uh, shades and tints. Safety goggles must have a direct or indirect ventilation to protect against fogging. Goggles with direct ventilation allow heat and humidity to dissipate but do not protect against splash hazards. Goggles with indirect violation are designed to protect against dust and splash hazards. Face shields. Face shields are worn are worn alone are not considered protective eyewear. They are designed to provide general protection in the face and the front of the neck. Full face shields often protect against chemicals or heat and glare hazards. Face shields do not fully enclose the eyes and are in conjunction with primary eye protectors such as safety goggles or glasses. Face shields are available with crown protectors to protect the front of the part of the head or chin protectors. Welding helmets. Welding helmets are used when welding or working with molten material. They are designed to protect the face, the neck, from heat, glare, weld splatter, and impact hazards. Specialty filter lenses. Protective eyewear equipped with appropriate filter lens must be used to protect against harmful light or other rays. Examples are infrared, violet, or laser light. Take a minute to view the eye and face protection selection chart. Welding goggles recommended filter lenses. The major eye and face hazards during welding and cutting include arc and heat rays, flying metal, slags from chipping, dirt, and particles from grinding. Because these hazards are so common in welding and cutting environments, proper selection and consistent use of eye and face protection are vital to avoid injuries and blindness. Depending on the specific work task, appropriate eye slash face protection may include safety glasses with side protection, goggles, face shields, welding helmets, curtains, or a combination of the above. Choosing welding goggles with the proper filter lens is imperative for the protection of your eyes. Proper filters can prevent retinal burns, cataracts, and permanent blindness. 
The shading of the lens increases as the number increases. The shade of the lens is dependent on the type of welding performed and electrodes admitted in the user's preference. The filter lens dulls the intensity of visible light to prevent glare and improve visibility. The chart above shows OSHA's recommendations for lens filters for specific welding operations, but it is highly recommended that you stay within two shades of the number listed. Eyeglasses and contact lenses. If you wear prescription glasses, make sure they are certified as eye protection, otherwise wear additional approved eye protection. All safety glasses, including prescription safety glasses, must have side shields. Contact lenses can absorb trap particles and gases which can injure your eyes. Do not wear contact lenses when you're exposed to high heat, dust, corrosives, chemical fumes, vapors, or splashes. In the event of an eye injury, do protect the eye against further damage by holding a folded cloth over the eye and acting it has as a shield. Seek immediate eye care. Bandage any cuts around the eye to prevent contamination or infection. Flush the eye with water in case of a chemical burn or in case there is a small debris in the eye. Use a cold compress to treat blunt trauma injuries such as a black eye, but be careful not to apply too much additional pressure. In the event of an eye injury, do not. Remove any objects that are stuck in the eye because this could support in the injury. Do not wash out the eye while dealing with cuts or punctures in the eye. Do not attempt to self-medicate, apply ointments, or take any medications, including over-the-counter drugs. Do not rub the eye or apply pressure. Doing so may cause more damage. Care and maintenance. Expect for damage daily. Clean if needed. Replace if broken, cracked, or if material lenses or face shields cannot be removed. Other protection for eye hazards. In addition to personal eye care, the following can be used. Guards, shields on screens or on machines, welding curtains or barriers, other barriers during grinding, cutting, or sanding, ventilation or hoods for handling chemicals. Emergency eye washes. An eye wash station is required for potential eye exposure to corrosives, acids or caustics, strong irritants, many solvents and other chemicals, toxic chemicals, pesticides and other chemicals. Using an emergency eye wash. Note where the eye wash is located. If a chemical is splashed into the eye, go immediately to the eye wash, get help if you need. Hold both of your eyelids open, wash your eyes for at least 15 minutes, and seek medical attention. Hand protection, gloves. We will review the following topics. Type of hazards, types of hand protection, use and care of gloves, Review of hazard assessments. Types of hand hazards. Knives, sharp edges, splinters, amputations, chemicals, blood and bodily fluids, excessive vibration, hot objects, electricity, extreme cold. The nature of these hazards in an operation to will be performed before your selection of gloves. 
a variety of potential hand injuries make sure that the appropriate glove pair is more difficult than choosing than any other protective equipment. Take care of when you choose gloves designed for your particular circumstance of your workplace. Glove manufacturers can give you valuable assistance. types of gloves. There are many types of protective gloves. Leather gloves protect your hands from rough surfaces. Special insulated gloves can provide protection from hot objects. Cut resistant gloves prevent and reduce from knives and sharp edges. Anti-vibration gloves Reduce the effects of excessive vibration from hand tools and machinery. Disposable gloves protect against blood, germs, and healthcare. Various kinds of chemical resistant gloves prevent contact with chemicals. The standard requires the preparer to prescribe, describe the precautions for handling and safe use. These include recommended industrial hygiene practices, precautions to be taken during repair or maintenance of equipment, and procedures for cleaning up spills and leaks. Some manufacturers also use this section to include useful information not specifically required by the standard, such as the EPA waste disposal method and state and local requirements. Glove limitations. Gloves can get caught in rotating machinery. Some people can be allergic to latex gloves. Gloves can actually cause more problems if the chemicals get inside the glove. Gloves can fail in conditions of extreme temperature, high mechanical force, high vibration, or handling extremely harsh chemicals. Glove size and fit. Gloves come in many sizes. Use properly fitting gloves that give you what you need in dexterity. Glove use and care. Your hands should be clean before using gloves. Fabric and leather gloves should be cleaned regularly or discarded. Latex gloves should not be used by latex sensitive people. Replace gloves if they have cuts, tears, holes, or defects. Some common sense rules about gloves. Make sure the gloves are the right length for the job. Do not use fabric or leather gloves to handle liquid chemicals. Use the right glove for the job. Chemical resistant gloves. The following slides cover the chemical resistant gloves for employees who use them. An MSDS will be provided provided information for which glove to be worn when handling different chemical containers. Chemical resistant glove facts. Chemicals will eventually penetrate over the gloves over time. Chemicals will also break and down, swell, crack, or weaken the glove material over time. The thicker the glove, the more resistant it is to chemicals. Chemical resistant gloves are not totally chemical proof. And remember, thick is better than thin. Chemical resistant gloves. No single glove material will protect against all chemicals. Gloves are selected according to the type of chemicals. Good chemical gloves are made up of vitin, butyl, nitrile, neoprene, PVC, or PVA, or a combination of these.
Chemical resistant gloves. You should know what chemical you are handling and how long the gloves will keep the chemical out. Throw away gloves whenever de degradation is visible and you know the chemicals have leaked inside. When handling highly toxic chemicals, two layers of chemical resistant gloves can provide additional protection. Removing contaminated gloves. Badly contaminated gloves are impossible to clean. Remove contaminated gloves safely and properly. Removal should be done in a way so that the bare hands do not touch the outside of the gloves. Foot protection. We will cover the following topics. Types of hazards, types of foot protection, the use and care of gloves, review and have hazard assessments, general requirements. The workplace is full of many potential hazards, including those that may pose a threat to an overlooked part of your body, your feet. Protective footwear for the workplace is designed to protect the foot for physical hazards such as sharp objects, falling objects, heat and cold, wet and slippery surfaces, chemical exposures, the employer shall ensure that the affected employee uses protective footwear when working in areas where there's danger for foot injuries due to falling or rolling objects or objects piercing the sole in which an employer should make sure their feet is not exposed to electrical hazards. Foot hazards, potential hazards. Impact injury. If you have ever stubbed your toe, you know that impact injuries can hurt. At work, heavy objects can fall onto your feet. If you work around sharp objects, then you can step on something sharp and punch through your foot. Injuries from spills and splashes. Liquids such as acids, caustics, and molten metals can spill into your shoes and boots. These hazardous materials can cause chemical and heat burns. Compression injuries. Heavy machinery, equipment, and other objects can roll over your feet. The results can, of these type of accidents can often result in bones being broken or crushed. Electrical shocks. Accidents involving electricity which can severely shock you or burn. Extremes in cold, heat, and moisture. If not protected, your feet can suffer from frostbite. If you must work in a really cold environment, and then extreme heat, on the other hand, can blister or burn your feet. Finally, extreme moisture on your shoes or boots can lead to fungal infections. Selecting the proper footwear. To properly protect employees from foot hazards, you must carefully select the proper type of footwear. The table provides basic selection guide. Take a look now to examine the table. The type of protective footwear required depends on the course of, uh, of course, the foot hazards you might encounter on the job. Types of protection for legs and feet. Leggings. Protection for lower legs and feet against heat hazards. Safety snaps are, allow leggings to quickly be removed. Metatarsal guards may be strapped on the outside of shoes to protect incept area from compression impact, usually made of aluminum, steel fiber, or plastic. Toe guards fit over toes of regular shoes also made of aluminum, steel, or plastic. Safety shoes have heat resistant soles and impact resistant toes. Some have metal insoles for protection against puncture wounds. Foot and shin guards may be used in additional, addition to toe guards for when, more, for when more protection is needed. How to care for protective footwear. As with all protective equipment, safety footwear, you should inspect footwear prior to each use. You should check the shoes and leggings for wear and tear reasonable intervals. This includes looking for cracks or holes 
separation of materials, broken buckles or laces. Check the soles of shoes for pieces of metal or other embedded items that could present electrical or tripping hazards. Follow the manufacturer's recommendation for cleaning and maintenance of protective footwear. Body clothing protection. We will review the following topics. Type of hazards, types of clothing protection, inspection of clothing protection, review of hazard assessments. Body clothing protection. Types of hazards to protect employees from chemical. Protective clothing is commonly used to reduce exposures to potentially toxic or hazardous chemicals when controls are not feasible. Physical hazards. Physical hazards include thermal conditions, vibration, radiation, and trauma, which all have the potential to affect the human skin and the human body adversely. Biological hazards. Biological hazards include infection due to agents and disease common to humans and animals and in the work environment. Body clothing protection, a cooling vest, sleeves and apron, coveralls, and a full body suit. Protective clothing comes in a variety of materials, each suited for each particular hazard. Conduct your hazard assessment and identify potential sources of bodily injury. Install feasible engineering controls and institute work practices controls to eliminate hazards. If it is possible of a body injury still exists, Provide protective clothing conducted of material that will protect against specific hazards in your workplace. Protective clothing comes in a variety of materials. Each, effective, each is effective at its own particular hazard, such as paper-like fiber used for disposable suits to provide protection against dust and splashes. Treated wool and cotton adapts to weld temperature changing. It is comfortable and fire resistant protects against dust, abrasions, and rough and irritating surfaces. Duck is a closely woven cotton fabric that protects against cuts and bruises when handling heavy, sharp, or rough materials. Leather is often used to protect against dry heat and flames. Rubber. Rubberized fabrics, neoprene, and plastic protect against most certain chemicals and physical hazards. When chemical or physical hazards are present, Check with the clothing manufacturer to ensure that the materials selected will provide protection against that specific hazard. This concludes personal protective equipment training. Please copy paste the hyperlink into your browser to begin the quiz.